the Vamana Avatara, the fifth incarnation of Lord Vishnu. You will now hear the story of Vamana Avatara from Nitya Venkatraman. Om Namo Narayanaya In an earlier episode, you heard the story of the churning of the milky ocean by the gods called as Devas and the demons known as Asuras for obtaining the nectar of immortality. We saw how Lord Vishnu took the form of a tortoise and also as Mohini to help the gods obtain the nectar by outwitting the demons. By getting the nectar of immortality, the gods became very powerful. When the gods got the nectar, they overpowered the demons and in that process, one Asura king by name Mahabali was killed in a battle. This Mahabali, commonly called as Bali, is the grandson of Prahlada, the son of Hiranyakashipu. The chief priest of the Asuras was Sukracharya and he was a very powerful person. It said that he brought back Bali to life with the help of his Sanjeevani mantra and the power of this mantra was that it could revive the dead. Bali was hence resurrected and he continued to rule the Asura kingdom. Bali was not a bad person though he was born in the Asura clan. Remember, he was the grandchild of Prahlada. So he was taught the Vedas by his grandfather and after that by his teacher Shukracharya. He was a great ruler and his people loved him. The people were very happy and prosperous under his rule. Bali performed severe penance to Lord Brahma. Finally, Lord Brahma appeared before him. Bali was overjoyed. My Lord, he said, bowing towards Lord Brahma, the people are always afraid of the Asuras. I want to show the world that we are good. I want to have the power equal to Indra, the king of the Devas. I should not be defeated in battle. Please grant me this boon. Lord Brahma understood that Mahabali was a righteous man and he readily granted him this boon. Bali then went to Sukracharya and asked him, Your Holiness, please show me the way to be a great king. It's interesting to note that this king, who's so loved by his people, is still humble enough to go and ask his guru about what he should do next. Shukracharya replied, You must perform 100 Ashwamedha Yajna. It is befitting that a king like you should perform the Ashwamedha Yajna, then you will always be the king of all the three worlds. Bali, who re- respected his teacher, agreed and started preparations for the Yajna. Shukracharya was a very good teacher and a very good battle strategist. With his help, Bali soon conquered the three worlds. However, aided by his guru, he was always righteous and he was a devotee of Lord Vishnu. Empowered, Bali now went for a battle against Indra. This time, Bali won the battle and Indra fled from the battlefield. Bali once again asked for Shukracharya's guidance to maintain his victorious position. Shukracharya said, If you keep on performing yajnas, you can live a fearless and powerful life. 
Remember, you should also give alms to the poor and the Brahmins. Meanwhile, the defeated King Indra was dejected. Bali had not only defeated him, but was also showing the world how a great ruler should behave. Bali was a good king and people loved him. Indra was actually feeling jealous of Bali. Indra's mother, Aditi, looked at him and asked him, What is the matter, son? Why are you so dejected? Indra looked at his mother and said quietly, Mother, it's Bali. People will always say that I am not so good a king as Bali. They will compare me to that Asura and say he is better. I am just not able to bear it. Aditi was a mother, a divine one at that. I will see what I can do, said Aditi. But you have to be a better king than Bali. She then prayed to Lord Vishnu. After some time, Lord Vishnu appeared before Aditi and inquired what she wanted. Aditi said, There is nothing, O God, that you do not know. You know that Bali has taken over my son's kingdom. Lord Vishnu replied, Aditi, Bali is a great man and he is a good devotee. He deserves to be the next Indra. Aditi said again, My Lord, I have a doubt. Bali is a fit king, no doubt. But are the other Asuras fit to rule? I am sure the other Asuras would fall to their old cruel ways and go back to hurting people. Is that what you wish? I will take care of this, said Vishnu. I will be born as your son and end Bali's prominence. This way I will ensure that Bali is saved but the Asura clan does not come up further. And soon Vishnu was born as a black beautiful boy to Aditi and sage Kashyapa. He grew up as a short statured boy and the sacred thread ceremony was also completed for him. He was Vamana, the fifth incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Meanwhile, Mahabali had performed 99 Ashwamedha Yajnas and had to perform just one more after which he would be crowned as the king of the gods. The final Ashwamedha Yajna was about to get completed. Vamana, as a young Brahmin boy, a dwarf in stature, went to the spot where Shukracharya and Bali were performing the yagna. Bali welcomed the Brahmin boy and said, How can I help you, young boy? However, Shukracharya was looking at the boy suspiciously. Mahabali said again to the boy, Today happens to be the day I give away any arms to any person. I will give you anything you want. Please ask whatever you want. Shukracharya interrupted hurriedly, took Bali to a private place and told him, Look, the boy is none other than Lord Vishnu. He has come here on, on behalf of Indra. If you give him what he wants, all will be lost. When Mahabali heard that the boy is none other than Vishnu, he was even more elated. My Lord has come here to ask something from me. Then I must go, he said. Stop! You will do no such thing, the Guru cautioned again. He has come to ask something from me. I will give him anything, Mahabali said with all devotion from his heart. If you disobey me, you will lose all your splendor, warned Shukracharya. I am not afraid of anything that may happen to me by giving my Lord what he wants. So saying, Mahabali walked out of that place. Such was his devotion to Lord Vishnu. He came back to the young boy and said, Sir, we were interrupted and I am sorry for that. 
As I was saying, today is the day I will give anything to any person who comes asking from me. What is your wish, sir? Vamana said, I have heard a lot about you giving alms to Brahmins. I do not want wealth or luxuries. I just want three steps of land measured by my feet. This is not what Mahabali expected. He almost laughed. Three steps? That is all you want? And that too from your tiny feet? Okay, I will give that to you. The boy said, that is all I wish. The king again said, I will give that to you. As soon as Bali uttered these words, Vamana started growing in size. He grew and grew and grew and grew. He grew so huge that from where Bali stood, he could see only the boy's feet, nothing else. The boy had grown so huge that the earth itself seemed to measure up in his one step. Soon the boy was larger than planet earth itself. He took a large step and put it on earth to claim it and said, Now the earth is mine. Then he took the second step and measured up the entire skies. He then asked Mahabali, O great king, you promised me three steps. I have measured the earth and the skies in two steps. I have nowhere to keep my third step. Where shall I keep my third step? Mahabali felt humbled. Shelved of all his ego and with all devotion, he bowed before Lord Vishnu and said, My Lord, I am not someone who breaks his promises. I offer my head as your third step. Lord Vishnu gave a smile and kept his third step on Bali's head. Bali was pushed to the netherworld called Patala by the force of the third step on his head. Thus, Mahabali was removed from his splendor of being the king of the three worlds and was pushed to the netherworlds. Indra and the Devas came back and felt relieved. It is said that Vishnu granted Bali a boon by which Mahabali could visit again once every year the land and the people he previously ruled. This revisit marks the festival of Onam being celebrated in the country, particularly in Kerala, as a reminder of the virtuous rule and his humility in keeping his promise before Vishnu. There is also a legend which says that thereafter Lord Vishnu felt sad and left his abode in Vaikuntha to guard his ardent devotee Mahabali's kingdom. This made Goddess Lakshmi also sad. So she took refuge in Bali's palace in the disguise of a Brahmin woman. Bali treated her like a sister. On the day of Shravan Purnima, she tied a Rakhi to the wrist of Mahabali and revealed the truth and reason for coming to his place. Mahabali was moved to know the greatness of his lord who himself came to protect him and his kingdom. Thus, from this day onward, in the northern part of India, it is customary to invite sisters on Shravan Purnima for the thread tying ceremony called the Rakshabandhan. The Vamana Avatar is the first incarnation in which Lord Vishnu incarnated as a human. Vamana in Sanskrit means dwarf. But since he grew to such a huge size, the incarnation is also known as Trivikrama Avatar. 
What is the significance of this uh, Vamana Avatara? Many of us may feel that uh, this is an injustice that uh, Lord Vishnu had done because he punished a benevolent king merely because he happened to be an Asura. Of all the Avataras, only in the Vamana Avatara does Lord Vishnu punish a good Asura, which obviously looks an anomaly. Vamana Avatara is the first Avatara where a Lord Vishnu took complete human form as a dwarf at the beginning. The uniqueness of this Avatara is that Vishnu did neither use any weapon nor kill any Asura. The only weapon that he used was that of begging in front of King Bali as a Brahmachari. And then he tricked and conquered Bali in a sort of way. It may be said that unlike other avatars, Vamana avatara was a Sattvic avatara. Bali was basically principled and generous but was egoistic and arrogant. Guided by his guru Shukracharya, he did severe penance, attained tremendous boons, ran over the earth, snatched the kingdom of the devas from them and became the undisputed monarch of even the heavens. Bali thus became Mahabali, the one of immense might. However, desirous of growing all the more powerful and for bringing more and more land under his reign, he began performing hundred Asumeda sacrifices. Thus, he started posing to be a serious threat to the devas, the celestial beings whom he had already dislodged from their land and positions. Lord Vishnu, pleased with the devotion of Aditi, agreed to her plea of saving her son Indra and other gods from oblivion and took birth as her own son, the Vaman. This is the reason for Lord Vishnu to suppress Bali. Bali was not annihilated. He was prevented from becoming the king of the Devalokam and was made the king of the Patala Lokam. And Vishnu himself became the doorkeeper of Bali in Patala Lokam. In a way, it is a great reward for Bali. The Lord whom he loved and held in high esteem came and begged before him for three feet of land. And Bali was so great that he granted the alms to the Almighty God. Not only that, the Almighty Lord himself became his doorkeeper. To sum it up, it is a strange and wonderful avatar.